Moore and with the Idaho Press Tribune. Today I am with John Cantlin of the NAMP Civic Center to speak about kind of his uh, first year as its director and his plans for the future. Uh, so first of all, we want to make sure to properly introduce you. Uh, tell us a little bit real quick about yourself and uh, how long you've been here at the NAMP Civic Center. Hi, Liz. Uh, <clears throat> been here about eight months now, just going on my ninth month. I came in basically early December of last year. Uh, I had retired from a corporate world after over three decades there, and I came back home. Yeah. And you're, you're from Caldwell? Is that Cal right? I grew up born and raised. Born and raised Caldwell. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, at the Civic Center, you've been here for eight months, you said. Yeah. Uh, tell me a bit about what your, your vision is for it. Well, the Civic Center is a unique thing. It's, it's 26 years old, literally almost to the day or the month. And it has two sides to it, which a lot of people don't really know. It has a performing arts side, a theater of about 640 seats. And then you have a conference series that kind of the area in the lobby that we're standing in now. And we can accommodate uh, about 550 people sitting down in rounds for dinner more than that in a conference setting or a meeting room situation. So those two sides of the house were well thought out in terms of bringing Napa a great opportunity for the community in terms of education, entertainment, business, commerce, and just sharing of knowledge. So it's really a neat little facility, if you will. Obviously, made some changes since you came here. Tell me a bit about that. Well, we started with getting hot water. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the first day on the job, we didn't have hot water in the front of the building, so we had to go find the the water tank and turn it on. We finally got that. We spent a lot of time in cleaning. Uh, we've remodeled the bathrooms so they're clean and they're modern with electronic devices. We've recarpeted the west side of the rooms. We're doing some of the fundamentals, what I call repair and replace. 26 years, you kind of wear things out. So we've done a lot in just the structural maintenance of it as well. I think the unknown part right now is we do have a caterer outfit called Sodexo. And with that, we have an executive chef, L.G. Harris. So we're working and implementing him from hors d'oeuvres, spirits, non-alcoholic beverages, wine and cheese, kind of buy local, cook local, serve local theme. And so we're growing our food component and beverage component as we speak. Um, we're primarily focused at meetings and conferences, Christmas parties, but we have this little warm and intimate theater that we have Music Theater of Idaho, Encore Theater. We have a number of productions from Scorpion Entertainment, and we've just introduced over the last few months the finest artist in southern Idaho called the Art Ambassadors of the Treasure Valley, led by Judy Stanfill. And that central hallway that you see off to your left is full of tremendous art. So those are sort of things that I'm trying to bring. Fine arts, performing arts, better quality, better experience. And you mentioned Music Theater of Idaho. Yeah. They, they'd been on a one-year hiatus from... A mm, little longer than that, Liz. Probably closer to a year and a half. So Jean and I sat down and we had a nice discussion on what her vision was and my vision. And we're almost in violent agreement that this is what we want. So Jean, a Music Theater of Idaho and their crew is back. This is their home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what sort of programming can we expect going into the fall season and the winter? Well, for, for our partners, you have adult theater like Shakespeare. You're going to have uh, various invitees like Ballet Idaho, uh, some of those from, from the Boise area. Gene and Music Theater of Idaho brings a musical component. So you see Oklahoma, Fiddler on the Roof, those sort of performances. And then we have our presentations and excited to have Taylor Hicks, you know, coming up after the first of the year. We have uh, Alexis Cole. We have McManus comedies. Uh, we have one of my favorites called Mo uh, Moscow Ballet. The finest ballerinas from Russia will be here uh, on the 8th of November. 
Uh, we have a great lineup and we're pretty excited about our entertainment component. So we need to get the, the, the noise out, if you will. We need to talk about what we're doing. And to do that, your interview and you know media conduits, our radio, our television, our marketing in terms of hard copy creation, digital, Facebook, we've really ramped it up in the last few weeks to talk about the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I guess related to the Civic Center, you have a hotel going out. We fall. do. And um, the Best Western Plus is just off to our west here of 81 rooms. They'll be opening their doors in March, right around March 1, and the owners from Spokane uh, will be here. And, and I'm excited to say that we have kind of a solution to overnight accommodations. But we also have other hotel partners around the valley. Uh, you know them, the Fairfield, the Shiloh Inn, the Holiday Inn Express, all partners, businesses, whether it be restaurants or hotels. We're all in it together here in Napa. Now, in talking a bit about the programming and some of the changes you've made, uh, there, it wasn't without some, I guess, uh, discussion in the community. Yeah. And uh, the Civic Center Auxiliary disbanded earlier in the mm -hmm. year. Uh, what led to this severing of relationships? Well, the relationship had basically was on their choice in terms of disband. And, and, and we'll leave it at that to say that, you know, they made a choice. But what I tried to do was follow the original charter that the auxiliary was built upon. And when we talked about being ambassadors to the community, uh, promoting the, the, uh, the facility and where we were going and quality of entertainment and helping us out, uh, they, they chose to disband. Mm -hmm. So... With that, we've, we are not missing a beat in terms of our host and, and what we're doing for that uh, aspect of host of, of various events. Mm -hmm. And one of the other changes you made that moves on to our discussion about the financial side. Uh, yeah. You can't run the Civic Center without talking about the finances. Yeah. Uh, you had a, a rental room fee increase of 10% and equipment fees also went up 23%. Correct. Uh, what sort of changes have you seen due to these changes? Well, the, the unique thing about with Mayor Henry is he's fiscally responsible, and, and that's one of the major reasons why I was hired from my business background to, to bring the strength for sustainability. Uh, it costs money, almost $2,800 a day to run this facility, and a lot of people don't realize the huge impact and responsibility of that. So we hadn't raised prices in over 10 years in the facility. We had to make counter money, basically see how many rental fees we were doing, and we were falling far short. So that was putting a lot of pressure on the taxpayers of Napa, almost to the tune of 365000 So one of my goals is to reduce that. And, and this is where we're in line with council members and the mayor, that to do that and have strength so we can sustain the building and, and continue to improve it, repair and replace, bring in better entertainment, and make it a better place to be. So that's the business side challenge that, that we're addressing here. When do you expect to have the Civic Center self-sufficient and not relying on such a heavy self Well, there's a huge learning. As we came out of you know, the last eight months, we looked at the budget. I've redesigned that. I put priorities in certain areas, as any new director would do. My staff is is you know, being structured in a professional work environment. We're out pro proactively soliciting partners. We're bringing new people in uh, to augment what we're doing within the community or the county. So it's going to take some time. I've already seen an impact. I've met budgets to year to date, which pleases Ms. Chandler in finance, which has been a challenge. We've adjusted some major things. I hope we soften this taxpayer blow in the next 18 months considerably, mm -hmm. okay? What sort of uh, changes have you had to make? You mentioned there were some major changes to meet that budget line. You know, the investment in terms of repair and replace is huge. That's the overhanging cloud, if you will. Uh, you don't know if an amplifier goes out at $8,000 on a Friday night during a performance. These are very real, very expensive situations. 10,000 bucks for carpet that hasn't been changed. 
we're getting into a, what I call a maintenance cycle, utilizing our facilities expertise. We have a great facilities department here in, 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 in Nampa. So they're addressing that. We're getting a timeline, a phase situation, and all that will play out. That's a major component of this building getting people to buy tickets to know that they can come here and they'll have a safe, warm, clean environment. That's the other big challenge for the Civic Center. Get those audiences up like they were eight or nine or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Yeah.